am Cassie McGillner Holmes, and I'm a professor at UCLA's Anderson School of Management. In my research, I look at the role of time for subjective well being and happiness. And recently, I've been looking at what's the effect of the amount of time we feel that we have in the day to day. And for many, that is not a lot. This feeling of having too much to do and not enough time to do it is what we call time poverty. And we've been exploring what's the prevalence of it, and it is prevalent. We conducted a um, survey among a nationally representative sample of Americans, finding that almost half of folks feel that they are time poor. They don't have enough time to do everything that they want to do. We've also been examining the detrimental effects of that on health and most importantly on our emotional well-being. We find that people who are time poor experience less positive emotion in their day-to-day, -day, feeling less joy and contentment, feeling more negative emotion, greater anxiety and anger, feeling reduced sense of meaning in their life and are less happy overall. So that's bad. So often we aren't focused on time as our most critical resource. Our attention tends to be drawn towards more sort of objective, concrete resources like money. In my work, I have found that actually shifting folks' attention from money to time as their most critical resource makes them more deliberate in how they spend their time and that has positive effects on their satisfaction. So it really is a question of salience, the extent to which we are focused on our time that has these positive effects, making us spend our time in better ways. My advice is not to quit. Um, because at that moment when I felt so time poor, like I couldn't keep up, and if only I had a whole lot more hours in my day, then I would be a whole lot happier, does not bear out in the research. So in work that I've done with Hal Hirschfield and Marissa Sharif, we looked at what is the relationship between the amount of discretionary time people have in their life satisfaction and happiness. And what we found is that Based off of the data, when people have too little time, yes, they are unhappy, and that is us who are time poor. But what we also found was something really interesting, that when people have more than about five hours of discretionary time in a regular day-to-day -day life, that they also experience greater unhappiness. And so there is such thing as having too much time. And that's driven by this lacking sense of purpose where we have days that are open and we look back on those days feeling like we have nothing to show for how we spent that time. That makes us feel unfulfilled and therefore dissatisfied. And so the answer that I would give is A, not to quit, and then become more thoughtful in how do you invest the time that you do have. And that does require, in some cases, pulling some hours away from work, particularly when they are exceeding the requirement, such that you can reallocate those hours in ways that are ultimately fulfilling and important like connecting and socializing and cultivating the relationships with the folks that matter to you in your life. Um, I love that there is a greater appreciation for just how important it is. Um, and in the participation of this conference, uh, lots of folks are sort of identifying what do they see as the key inputs into um, this outcome, which we all ultimately care about, which is our subjective well-being, our satisfaction with our lives, and the extent to which we feel enjoyment and happiness during the days of our lives. For me personally, I think the primary input is time. And I am very excited about pulling together the existing research and conducting new research to understand how can we better invest the hours of our days to live more fulfilling years and lives that we don't look back on with regret. The key question is how we should be spending our most critical resource, which is time. How do we invest the hours of our days to live days that don't just feel overly full, but feel fulfilling and such that we feel experience years and a lifetime that is more satisfying overall? 
It's such a wonderful conference for understanding how can we improve the lives of many people. In my research, I have taken the approach of informing individuals and how they can make better decisions for themselves. But in this conference, it's a wonderful opportunity for policymakers, for leaders within organizations to think about what are some policies that can be implemented that prioritize the role of time in individuals' lives such that they don't feel so time poor that they decide to leave their profession, that they don't feel so time poor that they are disengaged um, and burn out from their work. And so to the extent that this resource of time sort of gets to the level of policymakers thinking about it as so important beyond other factors, I think it's really exciting.